Hey all, no null here. So I've had a bunch of people ask how I make my Gmod animations. So I thought I'd show you all how I do it in a little series of episodes. Just an important note before we start. I am a very amateur Gmod animator, having only started animating in Gmod this April and I basically self-taught myself everything I know. So I won't know everything and some of the things I do may be the wrong way of doing them. I also haven't animated with SM64 before, so I won't be teaching you how to do that here. In this first part, I will teach you the basics of using Gari's mod, and the basics of posing models. So first of all, you're going to need Gmod, which you can get on Steam. If you don't have 7 pounds to spare or a good enough computer to run the game or record the game without it appearing like a PowerPoint presentation, then you're kind of out of luck. Next you'll need OBS and DaVinci Resolve, both of which are free, and will allow you to record your footage from GMOD and then edit it all together with text and funny meme sound effects. Since this video isn't about how to use both of these softwares, I'll leave tutorial links down below of how to use them and also how to adjust OBS settings to allow you to record in case your computer is rather crap. So before we get started in Gmod, you'll need some add-ons first of all. To get these add-ons, which I'll link below, all you have to do is press the subscribe button and it will automatically get downloaded. Alright so once in Gmod, go to start new game, select a map and then press start game. Once in, press escape as there are a few things we need to set up before we can do anything. Firstly, we need to enable the console. Go into options, go to keyboard and scroll down to toggle developer console. Select it and press edit key, which will allow you to assign any key to opening the console. I personally use the tilde key, but tab would also be a good option. Press the key you just assigned to open the console, and type in noclip. This should allow you to fly and go through walls by pressing the V key, though if this doesn't work then you should be able to set it to a key within the options like with how we set up the console. Being able to noclip and fly is tremendously useful for posing. So let's return to our game and learn some basic movement options. Holding the shift key allows you to run. Holding the alt key allows you to walk very slowly and holding the control key allows you to crouch, as well as move very slowly as well. Now let's learn all about posing ragdolls. Press the Q key to open the main menu, go to your add-ons list, or use the search bar, and select any ragdoll. There are two ways we can move this ragdoll. Firstly, we can use the physics gun to move them around by holding onto a specific body part and then just moving it. You can select the physics gun using the mouse scroll wheel. Holding the E key will allow us to rotate the ragdoll. Right clicking will allow us to freeze the selected part of the ragdoll in place. This will allow you to keep a ragdoll in midair. To unfreeze it, simply use the physics gun on it again. If you've frozen the ragdoll in multiple places. Pressing the R key while selecting the ragdoll will completely unfreeze the ragdoll. The second way we can move ragdolls is with the ragdoll mover add-on, which allows for much more precise modeling. Go into the menu and on the sidebar in under posing, select this ragdoll mover tool. Now, if you look at a ragdoll, you'll see this green text. Selecting any highlighted part will make this thing appear. This will allow you to move a ragdoll in multiple directions. Although for this to work you need to select the ragdoll's root bone. You can find out what this is by pressing Q and going to this section here and looking at bone list. The bone at the top is the root, and selecting it will select the bone for you. Alternatively, you can hold C to see this menu as well. Clicking the mouse wheel will change your movement options. You will now be able to rotate the ragdoll. And this works for any part of the ragdoll. Right clicking will allow you to change the proportions of any part of the ragdoll.
My final tip for the ragdoll mover is to go to this IK chains section and toggling these options on and off. This will allow you to keep the hands and feet frozen in place, while allowing you to move the rest of the ragdoll, which can be very useful. This doesn't work with all ragdolls, however. There is plenty more you can do with the ragdoll mover add-on, but that's the basics you should know. Holding down the C key and then right clicking a ragdoll will give us more options with how we use it. Selecting stand pose will make the ragdoll T pose and completely freeze it. Selecting make statue will freeze the ragdoll in its current pose, but will allow you to move it without having to unfreeze it. Going to skin will allow you to change the ragdoll's skin. SMG4 and SMG3 skins of skin 14 and 15 on the Mario model by the way. Going to body groups will allow you to alter some aspects of the model, such as removing certain clothing items like Mario's hat, or altering some ragdoll's eyelids. You can also alter the face with most ragdolls. Select the face pose tool under posing, and then right click on the ragdoll. This will allow you to alter parts of the face by toggling these sliders. You can also exaggerate its facial features by toggling the flex scale slider, though I'm not sure how SMG4 only exaggerates the size of one specific facial feature, such as Mario's mustache. If you know how, please tell me in the comment section. You can save a face you've made by pressing this green plus icon here. You can reset the face by clicking on this clear preset. You can remove this distracting circle, along with other HUD elements such as the health bar, by holding C and then toggling things off under the drawing tab, by the way. You can also pose the ragdoll's fingers using the finger poser. There are some good presets already there for you to use, such as the fist in point preset. By the way, you can also use the ragdoll mover to pose fingers, which will often allow for more accurate posing. You can also change where the eyes are facing by selecting the eye poser, and then right clicking on the ragdoll to make it look in your direction. Left clicking will allow you to move the eyes manually. To give Mario his derpy eyes, Go into his model and then right click. To change the eye size of ragdolls, you will have to go to the console and type this command, followed by a number of your choosing. Anything above zero will make the eyes bigger, while anything below will make the eyes smaller. Unfortunately, there is no way to only change the eye size of a specific ragdoll without affecting the eye sizes of other ragdolls. One last note, some models, Mostly SMG4's newer models, allow you to alter the eye size and position with the face pose tool, which is a far better way of doing things. My final tip for posing ragdolls is to use the no collide tool, which will make things a lot easier. This will allow you to remove the collisions between two ragdolls so that they do not come into contact with each other. Right clicking with this tool will allow you to remove a ragdoll's collisions with everything but the world itself. Using the Nocolite Everything add-on, we can also remove the ragdoll's collision with the world as well. The next thing you should know about is how to use the Well tool. This will allow you to connect two objects together so that you can move them together. You can also weld an object to the floor in order to keep it in place. You can also weld different parts of a ragdoll's body together. The final thing you should know about before we get into animation in part 2 is how to set up cameras. Go to this render subsection and select camera. This will allow you to place down a camera, and using the key that has been mapped here, your viewpoint will change to what the camera sees. Keep in mind that you can move cameras using your physics gun, and you can accidentally sometimes knock a camera over yourself or with ragdolls, so make sure to either weld the camera to the floor to stop it from moving accidentally, 
or select the static camera option before placing down a camera, although this will prevent you from moving the camera at all. And that's everything you should know before we move on to part 2, which should hopefully release rather soon, where I'll show you how to use the stop motion helper add-on. If you plan on only using the physics gun to make animations in Gari's mod, I recommend turning draw physics gun beams off in the drawing tab, so that these do not appear when you record what you are doing. Thank you all for watching. I like it, Kaji.